RPOD has just started shipping the brand new larger 202 model. In this video, we'll be considering the new RPOD 202 in detail and look at some of the considerable upgrades as well as a few shortcomings. Because this model is larger at 4,600 pounds unloaded, it competes in a higher weight class and fights against some established competitors. As always, this channel is all about helping you make the best decisions for your RV travel experience. And so, we'll attempt to uncover this new model in an objective way. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. I made the jump to traveling with my R-Pod back in 2016 and have never looked back. I bought three different RVs and have worked extensively from each while on the road as well as doing much traditional camping. I've had my share of problems along the way and this channel attempts to be what I wish I had when I started out. I think you'll find our videos concise and packed with helpful content especially if you're new to RVing. If you do, we'd love for you to join the On The Road team by subscribing to the channel to follow along. You can be informed every time a new video is published or a new live show is scheduled by clicking the bell icon below the video. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. So let's go ahead and jump in. So here are a few of the main stats on the new RPOD 202. Unloaded vehicle weight comes in at 4,574 pounds. That's without options. The cargo carrying capacity is 1,911 pounds, making the gross vehicle weight of 6,485 pounds. The hitch weight's 485 pounds, and this is the longest R-Pod yet at 25 feet. The width is 96 inches, and it has a 12-foot awning. As far as the tank sizes, the fresh tank is 30 gallons, the gray tank is large with two tanks equaling 60 gallons, and the black tank is also 30 gallons. The RPOD 202 shares several common characteristics with other current generation RPODs. These include large front windows, the Asdell wall construction versus traditional Luon, a convection microwave oven, and a built-in vacuum system. At the time of taping this video, Forest River has not included any photos of this new model on their website. Some dealers do have walkthrough videos available on YouTube. So let's talk about some nice upgrades and features that this model has that are not common to all R-Pods. On the exterior side, there's a new 60 gallon gray tank capacity. This is in two tanks, one under the galley and one under the bathroom. It has dual axles, meaning you can carry more capacity. It does have an outside kitchen, which includes a refrigerator, sink basin, and a griddle and it comes with the more ride steps, which are heavy duty. It does have hanger straps around the sewer outlets. It has an enclosed underbelly and a black tank flush on the utility side of the trailer. And it also has easy access to the water pump through the storage belly. This R-Pod has a 15 year walkable roof, which is really nice, and a backup camera prep. On the interior side, the RPOD 202 has ducted heat and air conditioning, a six foot cubic fridge, which is also common to the larger RPOD models, and a new fireplace. It has a large slide out with dinette, or you can actually have an optional sofa there. It has a very large walkthrough bathroom that's between the bedroom and the living area, and has a connection for a second TV in the bedroom. So here's some things we think are missing or some shortcomings to be aware of for a travel trailer of this size and weight. On the exterior side, there's no outside shower, which is unfortunate because most trailers at this size do have one. It has dual tank outlets, meaning you have to actually move your sewer hose from one side to the other when you're at a dump station. It only comes with one 20 pound propane tank which I think is kind of a miss there because most trailers of this size have dual propane tanks. And although it has an enclosed underbelly, it's not heated at all. The battery disconnect, like many of the R-Pods, is in plain sight, which I think is a miss. It's bright red and it's outside the trailer when it really probably should be inside the belly. It has what I think is a small awning, which is only 12 feet on a 25 foot trailer. And if you look at some of the other models, which we'll do in a moment, you'll find that this is rather small. There's no outside kitchen storage. Although there's a refrigerator and a small place for a basin sink, there's really no storage on the outside kitchen. And there's actually a griddle that can come with this kitchen, but you're gonna have to store that somewhere else. And of course it has the glass door, which is brand new 
to the RPOD 202, which is pretty new and unusual right now, and the jury's still out on this. On the interior side, the RPOD 202 still has the Luon floor, which is unfortunate. It has very limited counter space. And as you can see from the floor plan here, the counter space in the kitchen here is small for a travel trailer this size. It comes with a convection microwave, but it doesn't have a gas oven. And very unfortunately, it comes with only a short queen bed at 74 inches by 60 versus a normal queen size bed of 80 inches. Okay, it's important to be aware of other options available, especially as there are many other brands, even within Forest River, that have been building travel trailers of this size and weight for some time. So let's go ahead and look at a few models that compete in this weight class. These will all have walk around queen beds, dual axles, a double door fridge, a walk on roof, and full dry baths. You know, if you'd like to do additional research on these units discussed, we'll put the manufacturer's links in the description below. So first, let's look at another Forest River product. It's a Surveyor Legend 202 RBLE, 2021 model. So the unloaded weight is 4,628 pounds, which is very comparable to the RPOD 202. It has carrying capacity of 2,800 pounds with a gross vehicle weight of 7,465 pounds, which is considerably bigger than the RPOD 202. Hitch weight is light at under 500 pounds, and it's almost as long as the RPOD 202 at 24 feet, 4 inches. The width is the same at 96 inches, but it has a longer awning at 16 feet versus the 12 foot awning on the RPOD 202. As far as tank sizes, the surveyor's nice as well. It's got a 40 gallon fresh tank versus the 30 on the 202. The gray tank is 40 gallons versus 60 on the 202, so smaller than the RPOD 202. And the black tank's the same at 30 gallons. So some of the features are Asdale wall construction, which is in common with the RPOD 202. But the Surveyor comes with dual 20 pound propane tanks, which the RPOD again, remember, only has one. It's slightly wider in interior space. The bathroom, however, is fully accessible with the slide in. And that's one thing we didn't mention in terms of the RPOD 202. When you actually bring the slide in, especially you have the dinette, you're gonna get cut short in terms of getting into the bathroom if you're on the road and have to stop at a rest stop and use the restroom. It does have a larger eight cubic foot refrigerator. Remember the RPOD 202 only has a six cubic foot. It has a three burner range with a gas oven. And that's very helpful, by the way, if you have to do off-grid camping where you can't plug in because that convection oven isn't really workable unless you have a generator. And the gas oven can be used anytime with propane. And by the way, the surveyor has a much larger kitchen workspace. And that's, again, one of the shortcomings of the RPOD 202, just not much kitchen workspace. The surveyor also has a nice breakfast bar, which is pretty uncommon in a travel trailer. And you can use bar stools at this breakfast bar. So that's a neat option. Another big deal, which I didn't mention above about the RPOD 202, is that the bedroom on the surveyor is not cut off by the bathroom. So think about that with me for a moment. In the RPOD 202 at the floor plan, you'll notice that the bathroom goes all the way across the width of the trailer, which means if you're in the living area and you wanna to go to the bedroom, but someone's using the bathroom, you're pretty much out of luck there. Or opposite, if you're wanting to go from the bedroom into the living area and someone's using the bathroom, you're pretty much stuck in the bedroom. The surveyor doesn't have that. It's not cut off by the bathroom. And the surveyor also has what I think is a big miss in the RPOD 202, which is a standard queen bed at 60 by 80. So if you have a taller person who needs to sleep, they're gonna need a longer and standard queen bed versus the short queen that's in the RPOD. The surveyor also has a nice interior vaulted ceiling. Now there's a couple things about the surveyor that are missing. One is an outside kitchen. There's actually more space in the interior refrigerator at eight cubic feet, but there's no outside kitchen, which is very really convenient if you're having a good time outside and don't want to go inside to get a beverage. And also the bedroom is just not divided from the living space. So when you walk in the surveyor, the bedroom's right there. It's not divided off. Okay, so that's our first travel trailer to compare, which is also, again, a surveyor and it's a Forest River product. Let's hop over and look at a grand design. Imagine XLS 23RBE. This is also a 2021 model. This comes in a little heavier at 5,125 pounds with 1,870 pounds carrying capacity, equaling just under 7,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. The hitch weight's just under 500 pounds, and it's a little longer than the RPOD 202 at 25 feet 11 inches. The width is the same at 96 inches, 
But again, this has a longer awning at 18 feet versus what I consider is a short awning at 12 feet with the RPOD 202. As far as tank sizes, the Grand Design has a 43 gallon fresh tank, which is bigger than the 30 gallon on the 202. It's got a really large gray tank capacity at 82 gallons on the Grand Design versus 60 on the RPOD 202. And a larger black tank uh, at 37 gallons versus 30 on the 202. Some of the nice features on the Grand Design are dual propane tanks again, slightly wider interior. The bathroom again is fully accessible with the slide in. It's got bathroom windows, which is, adds nice light to the bathroom. A three burner range with gas oven, a large kitchen workspace, and the bedroom's not cut off by the bathroom. So again, these are all things that are common in this weight class that the RPOD 202 unfortunately doesn't have. And it also has a standard queen bed at 60 inches by 80 inches. Again, I think a miss on the RPOD side. It has heated and enclosed underbelly and heated and enclosed dump valves. Now that's important to remember because when you get to this weight class, a lot of the trailers not just have enclosed underbellies, but heated, which is a big deal if you want to go camping longer during the season when it gets colder. So a couple of the minuses of the Grand Design. The slide out is on the campground side. Now you may like this and you may not. I think it's kind of strange actually to have your slide out on the campground side. And a big deal from a structural perspective is the Grand Design does not use Asdale in the walls. Okay, so that's the second trailer to compare to, something to research on your own. The third one we want to look at is the Keystone Premier. It's the 23RB PR model, again, 2021 version. Unloaded weight is a little bigger at 5,265 pounds with carrying capacity of 1,735 pounds. You get your gross weight right around 7,000 pounds, which is very comparable to all the units we've been looking at. It's got a slightly heavier hitch weight at 655 pounds. Now the Premier is a good bit longer at 27 feet 6 inches, but it also is 96 inches wide like the other models. But the awning is 15 feet, so it's a little bigger than the R-Pod and a little shorter than some of the other ones. Now on the Keystone Premier, it has a 43 gallon fresh tank versus the 30 gallon on the R-Pod 202. A gray tank of 60 gallons, which is the same as the R-Pod, and a black tank of 30 gallons, which is also the same as the R-Pod. Now probably one of the biggest features to be aware of in the Keystone line, including the Premier, is the new Hyperdeck flooring. This is a composite floor, and it is not Luan, so it's going to be much more uh, water resistant versus Luan. So if you have some sort of leak, anything that's Luan is going to have a problem with that more than likely. Well, the Hyperdeck is a brand new technology that Keystone just put in in the last year. It has dual propane tanks, power stabilizer jacks, which is a really nice feature. Like other competitors here, it has a larger 8 cubic foot refrigerator and a 3 burner range with gas oven. The bedroom's not cut off by the bathroom and it has a standard queen bed of 60 inches by 80 inches and a vaulted ceiling. This also has ducted furnace and AC. Nice thing, really nice thing about the Keystone Premier is the exterior kitchen space with a sink, range, fridge, and storage space. It's a really nice outdoor kitchen area. It also has enclosed and heated underbelly. Now one of the main minuses of the Keystone, although it has the Hyperdeck floor, it does not have Asdale in the walls. So just again, remember that the manufacturer's links for all these models discussed in the video are in the description below. You know, one of the main values of this channel is to give you the information you need to weigh options in order to make better decisions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it. Thanks for watching. This is John Marucci. Stay safe and so long for now.